In episode 5 of the Book of Boba Fett, how about we don't see the title character at all? Hmm. Interesting. Also, I do want to mention that this is going to be filled, filled with spoilers. And if you're a Star Wars fan, you owe it to yourself to watch the episode first before you watch this or any other review uh, talking about spoilers and all that. No, no. There's too much Star Wars goodness in here for you to have it be ruined by spoilers. Okay? So without further ado, let's get into the review. The episode, entitled The Return of the Mandalorian, starts with The Mandalorian. No wasted time here. Coming after a Klaatuinian. A fight breaks out and Mando is injured in the fight by his inept usage of the Darksaber. He cuts his bounty in half on a table and retrieves his head, returning it to his employer, and gets the location of where the armorer and Paz Vizsla are camped. They heal his wounds and the armorer tells of the origins of the Darksaber, it being created by Tar Vizsla a thousand years ago, who was both Mandalorian and Jedi. She reforges the Beskar spear into armor for Grogu, presumably chainmail. The armorer tells the story of how Bo-Katan, being given the Darksaber instead of winning it in battle, cursed Mandalore, which led to the Night of a Thousand Tears. While training Mando to use the Darksaber, the armorer states that he is fighting against the blade. Paz Vizsla challenges Mando to a duel, and Mando wins. When asked if he has ever removed his helmet, Mando says that he has. The armorer banishes him and says that he may rejoin their sect if he visits the mines of Mandalore. Mando leaves and boards a commercial flight to Tatooine. In a humorous scene, he has to relinquish his weapons before boarding. Upon his arrival, he visits Pelimoto, played by Amy Sedaris, who suggests a new ship instead of another Razor Crest, a reclaimed Naboo N1 Starfighter. In a lengthy sequence, they get the fighter up and running, making some customizations along the way. A BD droid, first seen in Jedi Fallen Order, makes an appearance. While testing the N1, we see Beggar's Canyon and some familiar sights from the pod race in Episode 1. He is stopped by X-Wings piloted by Captain Carson Teva, played by Paul Sun-Young Lee, and Lieutenant Reed, played by Max Lloyd-Jones, Mark Hamill's double in Chapter 16 of The Mandalorian. Upon his return, they are visited by Fennec Shand, who recruits him to help Boba Fett. He agrees, but first, he must visit a little friend. The way that I do these videos, right, is is I watch the, the, the episode when it releases at like 2 a.m., right? I, I sit there and I watch it, go to sleep. I get up in the morning and I record the video and, you know, sitting here watching it again as I'm making notes, all that sort of thing. Well, this episode is so good that it was hard to take notes because I kept getting sucked back in to the episode. Um, is, it, is, it, is it bad to just call the episode wizard? Because it was wizard. You have the Darksaber, the, the, the N1 Starfighter, you've got the BD droid. There's so many links to other media, right? The Darksaber is, of course, from the Clone Wars. BD is from, is from Jedi Fallen Order. It was done so well. It's, it's hard to complain, you know, if you're a fan, because it's just like, wow, that is so cool to see so many different things being linked together and a lot of love shown for the prequels, which, hey, I like the prequels. In my opinion, Bryce Dallas Howard has done the best episode of The Book of Boba Fett so far. Uh, her work is, it just, it looks great, it sounds great, the the acting is great, even the fights are, are edited better, I, I, I liked everything about it. In fact, it may actually be my favorite episode of any Star Wars on Disney Plus so far. It's really that good. Another cool little tidbit that I didn't actually mention is I love the fact that they played the Mandalorian theme and the Book of Boba Fett theme on top of each other during the, the I guess, the opening of the show. And they work really, really well together. And I just thought that was a, a cool little thing. Um, I, I, I Look, you know that they did that on purpose, and it's uh, it works really well. Now, here's where I get into some, well... I guess a little bit of bad, I guess. the It's not really bad, but, you know, it, it is called The Book of Boba Fett. So the choice here to, to basically do another Mandalorian episode in the middle of another character's series, it's a little strange. I don't really understand the thinking here, other than the fact that, I mean, you kind of have to catch up with, with Mando in order for him to join... The, the ranks of the, whatever, the muscle 
for for Boba Fett, I just it's just a weird thing. And one of the things that I keep thinking about was the idea that that in so many of the new stuff, it's like they've they've attempted to sort of derail or or I don't know, change the legacy characters in favor of the new characters, you know, in in almost in in a way building up the new characters. Boba Fett just hasn't had that much to do yet, and it's kind of disappointing because I always thought that, you know, Boba Fett was like a man of action and and there would, you know, be action in this action series. But what what I do like about it though, the, especially this episode, is that there are parallels between Boba Fett and Mando's stories at this point. You know, they're they're basically having to reinvent themselves. I mean, the N1, the the Naboo Starfighter, is a perfect example of maybe this this actual character change uh, for for the Mandalorian himself, because he's not going to be able to you know carry a bunch of bounties on board. You know, it's it's really kind of a it's like I don't know a single seat kind of fighter, except, you know, it, it is quite telling that they got rid of the astromech bay and it looks big enough for, I don't know, a, a rather small, cute being. The thing is, I mean, let's, when it comes down to it, I kept thinking, where is Boba? Where is Boba Fett? What's going on? But then I kept saying, ah, the heck with it. This is so much fun that I don't really care that much. And that doesn't bode well for a series called The Book of Boba Fett when another character comes in and that's so much more interesting. You know what I mean? See, that's really the crazy part about all this, right? Is that we've only got two episodes left. So how are they going to wrap this up? I mean, is it going to be one of these things where we go, well, I like this episode and I like this episode, but overall it was kind of eh. I hope it's not the case. I hope that these last two episodes bring everything together in a way that you can say, you know what, the whole thing, the whole thing was completely worth it, and uh, and I love it. But right now, I'm 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 a little confused. But you know what, this episode, I'm gonna have to give it a three and a half out of four. It's the best episode. Like I said, it's the best episode of Book of Boba Fett, uh, and maybe the best episode overall. So I'm really curious, um, from your standpoint, how have they done so far? How is the Book of Boba Fett episode five, the return of the Mandalorian, which basically was just, you know, the Mandalorian 2.5, basically, you know, like, like, let me know what you're thinking and, uh, and we'll talk about it because this is really, really interesting, not only for the, the connectivity between everything that they're doing, which I, I, I'm actually really liking. And then how are things going to move forward, Right. That, I mean, that's that's what I've got in my head. So I'm kind of curious what everybody else is thinking. So thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.